Within the U.S., there have been approximately 60 cases, including a number of patients who have been repatriated to the states. Rhode Island has not had a confirmed case at all. I want to spend some time talking a little bit about the extensive preparedness steps that we have been taking, in addition to the resourceful monitoring that has been occurring. From a preparedness standpoint, we understand that this is a core function of public health. We have a Center for Emergency Preparedness and Response that is working around the clock, year round, to prepare for events such as this. It's important to know with the fact that we have not had a case here in Rhode Island, the general level of risk for Rhode Islanders today is still low. The risk for community-wide spread has not occurred in the absence of a confirmed case. We understand that people are anxious, and that's why we want to make sure that we're continuing to engage with the public and let them know all of the work that's going on. It's appropriate to be concerned. There are unknowns. But we want to make sure that friends, family, and the children, which are also important, have the information they need so that you can prepare and not panic. That's a key for us. To be able to share some of the preparedness measures that are occurring, um, we have activated our incident command system response. That includes a large number of uh, people from across the administration being engaged with preparing for an urgent situation such as this. We have also been regularly communicating with our Rhode Island Infectious Disease Epidemiology Advisory Committee so that we can track any clinical and epidemiological developments. That's been key for emerging infectious disease situations such as this. We also have been maintaining a robust system to receive and follow up on illness reports. And we've been regularly communicating with healthcare providers, facilities, and community partners such as schools and municipal officials. It's important to know that all Rhode Islanders can contribute to preparedness. A grounding factor is the fact that the same steps you would do to prepare yourself for something like novel coronavirus are the same things that we recommend to do for viruses like the flu. The flu season here in Rhode Island is ongoing currently. There have been more than 650 flu-related hospitalizations and unfortunately, 11 flu-related deaths. While there haven't been any confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Rhode Island, there has been a lot of influenza, as we all know. It's a critical part to this message to make sure that we are doing what we need to to respond to influenza currently as a primary way to prepare best for any potential of coronavirus coming to the community. The number one thing that's important to mention is getting your flu shot. Flu shots are your best protection against the flu. It helps keep people out of the hospital. That is a key need. Other recommendations include washing your hands, using appropriate cough etiquette, staying home from work or school when you're sick is important, Avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth, ways that germs spread, whether flu or other viruses, and then certainly keeping surfaces clean, wiping them down with household disinfectant. It's important to also be able to share that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention does not recommend that people who are well wear a face mask to protect themselves from respiratory illnesses. Face masks are generally used to prevent sick people from getting other people sick. This is important to spread the word on because we want to make sure that we are preserving the equipment that we need to protect people for the situations when they are needed, when people are sick. 
there's also an important message for business owners. Business owners can take a number of steps to create healthy workplaces. You can actively encourage sick employees to stay home. Look at your policies and see what type of flexibility can be allowed to permit employees to stay home to care for a sick family member if they need to. Help to emphasize appropriate respiratory etiquette, coughing into your sleeve, and hand hygiene within your um, work setting for all employees. And then routinely clean all frequently touched surfaces, such as workstations, countertops, or doorknobs.